So here we are on our Aliyah Yomi for our inductive learning. So we're going to be going into Deuteronomy chapter 16, starting with verse 18. That's where this week's parasha starts. And uh, let's get our inductive learning on. Yay. Uh, any questions before we start? Did anybody happen to take a look at this yet? Grammatical term when Thursday is repeated twice, and then the meaning is that it's like an intense. Yes. Like yes. A big thing. Okay, so term. sure. So Naomi is asking when we have one of the letters in the root is repeated. Um, this is called. I, I I think what you're asking is when the root has a repeated letter, right? So this is called a geminate verb, right? So when for example, we have this verb, uh, shara. So, uh, is this what you're talking about, right? Where one of the root letters is duplicated? And this is called a geminate. Geminate. So often what will happen is that second letter will be gone. And depending on the word, sometimes you'll get a dagesh. In the, in the second letter, even though it's not intense, just showing you that the if, that won't work in this case. I picked a bad example because Reish doesn't take a dogish, but this would then result in compensatory lengthening, etc., etc., etc. Is that what you're asking about, Naomi? These kinds of verbs with a, a duplicated root letter? Um, I was asking when like, for example, of the doom means you shall completely destroy but it's like the same root is repeated. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. This is called infinitive absolute. The infinitive absolute is used that way. So so when it's completely or totally, etc., so you take the root and then you, you put first, first you put it in infinitive absolute, okay, and then you actually conjugate the verb like you'd expect, right, like imperfect, perfect, etc. So when that happens, this is called the infinitive absolute, and you're using the infinitive absolute syntactically to express what's called a emphasized or an emphatic meaning. And usually the syntax tells us if it means repeatedly or completely. So in the case that you chose from last week's Torah portion, uh, it was the since the emphatic absolute, pardon me, since the infinitive absolute comes first and then the normal verbal form comes, this expresses a complete action, like a complete destruction, or in that case, like a complete uh, perishing, causing to perish, something like that. Okay, hold on, let me just see my recording program. Sent me a note. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, in, with, with the syntax of this, though, I'm, I'm reducing this complexity a bit, but in general, if you change the order, if instead this one was first, and then the infinitive absolute was second, then usually it's more like a, expressing a, a, an ongoing again and again, like always. It means something more like, like I don't know if you guys know that note from, from science, always, always, or all, right, always. So, for example, multi-humans, right? You know, there are certain crimes in the Torah, we get multi -umat. So, mot is the infinitive absolute, and humat is he will be killed. <coughs> So, he shall surely be executed, right, is one way to translate that. If I changed it and put the infinitive absolute at the end, if I said, you mot mot, it's kind of strange. This would mean he will continuously be killed, right, continuously be executed. It, it, it's weird, right? The syntax doesn't always work this way, but this is at least, I feel like, maybe 80%, 85% of the cases. Okay, did, did that answer your question, Naomi? Okay. I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, another, I... exam another example of that is Shatat, uh, Shin, uh, Bab, and Tet. In certain conjugations, like it changes it to the plural or something like that, it's doubled. Or ah, yeah, ah, you'll see it twice. The PL form. Yeah, you'll see it twice, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yep, that's, that's infinite absolute. 
Yep. Only the infinitive absolute does this. The infinitive construct does not, right? It doesn't have this this need to double, <clears throat> right? This and this is a pattern. And this is actually it's good you asked about this. Although check in my in my language snippets or grammar snippets on the YouTube page actually. Oh wait, or was it in Aliyah Yomi we did? Oh no, yeah, we we have a full talk about this. I go in and I give a full talk about the infinitive absolute, exposing you to different ways it's used. Like we were calling this our weird Hebrew grammar piece, right? That the infinitive absolute, it can be a noun. It can function as a noun, right? It doesn't have to be twice in a row, the absolute and then the verb. It can be by itself uh, functioning like as a noun. You can take on like a gerund-like idea of the meaning, like you know, running is good, right? So you could you could actually do that with infinite absolute, right? Uh, you could say roat is good, right? It's tov. Uh, you could you can do this with various forms. I mean, and it can be a verb, right? It can stand in for imperfect or perfect or command or a participle. It's kind of like a wild card. The infinite absolute can be all of those things in context. So you have to just work with it to see how it works. But when it's doubled, when we've got it, and then we have the normal form of the verb or vice versa, then it's more clear. We don't have to decide. Wait, is that a verb? Is that? It's it's just expressing this emphatic notion. Either the emphasis is an ongoing action, or the emphasis is a completely resolved action. You shall surely execute, right? Don't let them off the hook, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, because I, the, I encountered this when I was studying Second Chronicles 16 about the eyes of the Lord running to and fro, and it uses the verb. Uh, Mesh the thought, which it was unless you say PL participle, right? Right, <laughs> feminine, <plural>. right? Yeah, <laughs> hello, <laughs> yeah, you're getting advanced there, yeah. So, you're gonna see this all over the place. It's a good question, and uh, yeah, it's very important. So, okay, yeah, because initially, initially, I thought the reason why they doubled the pet because it's a PL and there's no dagish there to signify it's a PL. So I was wondering, maybe the dag is uh, supposed to be in the tet, uh made it double. Instead of writing the dagesh, they write two tets in a row. And when Yomar helped me analyze, he sent me the, the different conjugations showing in the different conjugations that uh, this it's also repeated. Ah, uh, yeah. The tet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's yeah. When when we're dealing with infinitive absolute, right? It's going to be an infinitive absolute in those cases. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's great. I like I like how you're digging around and finding on your own. You're going to do really well. Look, Hashem. Okay, so let me let me delete my notes. Rabbi, oh yeah, you want to go ahead? Rabbi, yeah. How about the praise? Chasak chasak. Is it a Gemini? Ah. Chasak chasak. Ah uh, yeah. No no no. This is just uh. It just uh, repeated. <laughs> be strong. Be it's strong. Just, uh, it's just a. Uh, Imperative is just a imperative. yeah. That's right. Yep, it's imperative okay. to, to the to the to the singular form. Yeah, and um, actually, you'll see this sometimes too. Sometimes Hebrew will repeat a word in its normal form just for emphasis, right? So if it's not the infinitive absolute, it's not saying always be strong, right? You know, it, it's not saying chazok chazek, right? Uh, which actually you wouldn't see that way anyway. If we had written chazak uh, tig was it would it be uh, tehazok? Then it would be continuously, or indeed, be strong. And if we reverse the order, then it would be continuously be strong. But sometimes we'll just see a word duplicated in the exact same form, and that's just some kind of normal emphasis. We see this with nouns sometimes. Sometimes instead of putting a noun in the plural, you'll just see the word repeated. For example, yom yom. Okay, yom yom is showing some kind of emphasis. What do you think yom yom means? Yom yom. Yeah, very good, very good. Every day, every day, daily, right? I. So Rabbi, yes. The Gemini applies to noun. Yeah, you can do it with nouns, but it's but it's it's not the infinitive absolute anymore. But it's the same driving yeah. feeling for the language, the way that our ancient ancestors liked us to explain these things, right? To to present these things. So yom yom, it's daily, right? Uh, but it's has, but it's just a noun in that case, just noun. And in the one you you picked when we finished the Torah portion, you know, be strong, be strong. That's just an imperative. But 
you know, they wanted to make it stronger, so they just decided to write it twice, right? So sometimes you'll get that happening, and you can usually figure it out like you guys have done, right? Wrestling with the text, beautiful. Love it. Okay, okay Rab. So, Rab, the Sefer Devarim Perek, Tate Zayin, Pasuk Kaf is a Gemini. I don't have it memorized, so thanks for saying the reference, but can you tell me the Hebrew? <laughs> can you? Devarim Perek. No, no, no. Okay, I'll look it up. Okay. Devarim, ma? Devarim, perek. Okay. Pasuk kaf. Okay. The sedek, sedek. Ah, yes. Yeah, very famous. The parasha shabu. Ken. Yeah. Yeah, there's emphasis. It's a Gemini. Yeah, yeah. Justice, justice. Sedek, sedek, right? Some translate righteous. That's actually very famous. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, sedek, sedek, you know, yeah, yeah. I was just saying you could just say the Hebrew for me, <laughs> but sorry. Very nice. So yeah, justice, justice. You shall pursue, right? So the fact that it's repeated twice, this is an emphasis, right? Although the sages sometimes when you have nouns twice like that, they'll they'll break off a rem as a deeper explanation. Well, the first tzedek has to do with, with the judges overseeing other people, and the second tzedek has to do with each individual's responsibility to seek justice, right? So sometimes you get you know deeper explanation about why we have the doubling there, right? Or Rashi sometimes he'll even comment on a infinite absolute. He'll say we have it twice here because and then he goes on to break it out. This is all encompassing for the world, etc. So yeah, good questions. Nice. A any other questions before we roll on? Okay. Oh. Go ahead. Can you talk louder? I'm sorry. Start over. I didn't hear you. We just have to rely on context. If the word is repeated, if it's emphasis, or if it's like, for example, daily. Right. Like so, so, okay, yeah. so the question is we just need to rely on context when we see this sort of thing, like a word repeated twice. So, here's what I would recommend. If it's not immediately obvious, then just be very literal. Say day, day, right? Day, day. <laughs> and then, when you make your second pass, you can probably figure it out by then in context with the verse before and the one after. Oh, okay, this is saying like daily, like every day, right? Or in the case of Tzedek, Tzedek, Tildolf, that Yomar brought up, you can, okay, so even if you just left it literal, which many translations leave that, just leave it literal, right? Justice, justice, you shall pursue. We kind of get the feeling in English already, right? We even don't need to say like, you really need a secret justice, right? Pursue justice, right? We we kind of get it. So I would say if it's not immediately clear to you, then just be hyper literal. Just translate it exactly into English the way you see it in the Hebrew there. But do not do this with the infinitive absolute when you see it twice, right? Because you'll see it. This is a very specific syntax. You'll see it in the infinitive absolute, and then the verb is conjugated. Or you'll see the verb conjugated, and then you get the infinitive absolute. That's a very specific clear syntax where you don't want to repeat the word twice in English, okay? In that case, in that case. It says, uh, there's, a, there's a guy here in the Philippines, came here some years back. Um, I want to be careful. Don't say the name if you know the person, okay? So uh, you're claiming to be a Levy and then claiming to be a Kohen, but but married to a Catholic, so you, you can't be a Kohen and marry Catholics. All kinds of stuff. Like that. Anyway, and um, he's got enough Hebrew to be dangerous. And usually teaches out of Ruth because Ruth is the easiest book in the Bible, right? And uh, anyway, and I remember hearing a lecture from this guy, and he was saying that the translations are wrong because, and he used these examples, he shows infinitive absolute, but he doesn't call it that. He shows examples with that. He says, look, the verb is twice. Why does the English only translate it once? They're lying to you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, he doesn't know grammar. I just kind of felt bad, like embarrassed kind of, you know. So, no, you don't translate it twice when it's when it's infinitive absolute. This is just the way that the language expresses either an ongoing action that's going to go on forever, like or at least a very very long time, or an emphatic action like a certainty. It you, mult you might, surely you will execute them. They will he'll be executed. Okay. So, I think you guys know enough now that you can kind of pick out when people are selling snake oil you can kind of see it already that okay yeah person doesn't really know what they're talking about right because so few people can even read the alphabet and so it, it really opens up pandora's box for a lot of people to just make stuff up and just have a platform to run on and suddenly it's like they know something 
when really they just learned how to read, you know, maybe some vocabulary. You know, so, and that what's great is the more you guys know, you can help to protect people from these kinds of teachers, right? Learning stuff that's false like that. Okay? All right. So let me erase this here. Rabbi, one, one, one Go thing. for it. How about the Roshi Roshi? Just like that. I think it's. it's oh, the yeah. Roshi, my Roshi. head, my head. The boy gets hit by the Reapers. Yeah. 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 So, it's a yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just emphasis, right? It's a uh, it's, yeah. Well, it's, it, and you can imagine him literally saying this, right? You're hurting. Ah, oh, my foot. My foot. You know, it's like, <laughs> right? I mean, so in that case, it's even more natural flowing. That's a nice example. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Rob. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. And then he gets saved later, right? So book of show. Okay, any other questions or comments? There's a lot of interest in this. Maybe I'll make up a I'll work up a teaching on all these on different examples in scripture where these sorts of things happen. But I think you guys already are starting to get it intuitively, yeah? But again, we separate out those examples. When it says like Roshi Roshi, that's different than when we have an infinitive absolute verbal form with a conjugated verb. That's very different. That is a specific syntax, right, which requires uh, emphatic translation. Go ahead. Someone's trying to ask something? Okay, I'm going to mute all. I think someone has some background noise. Okay, so let's let's get with our Aliyah Yomi. Yeah, who wants to read verse 18? Jump on in there. By me, Rabbi. Oh, I think Ate is already reading, Tom. You can do the next one. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read Rabbi. 19. You'll do 19. Or knowing me. Uh, Ate, is, Ate will do 18. You do 19. Okay? Okay, okay. <clears throat> um, wait, wait. Ate is reading this one. Go ahead. Great, said it. Great, good. Good reading. Good reading. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Shofetim, who knows what that is? Shofetim. Is it judgment? Judgments. 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 Judges. 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 Very good. Judges. Yep. Judges. Yep. Judges. Ve shoterim. Shoterim, I don't really expect you to know. A shoter, uh, in modern Hebrew, is uh, police officers. A shoter. Right? So this is like officers or officials. Right? So Rashi clarifies that the shoftim. Oh, sorry. I, 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 go back. That the the shoftim, rather shofetim. Sorry, I'm doing the Israeli pronunciation. Shofetim, right? Because <laughs> long vowel, so it should be vocal schwa. We get sloppy sometimes. So this is judges, like you said. So they're the ones interpreting the Torah, the judges. And then a shoter, the shoterim. These are the ones, according to Rashi, who who enforce the decisions of the judges. Right, so when they decide, okay, you can't carry your burdens around on the Sabbath if you're not in a walled city, and then they see somebody pulling a mattress around, they'd go out and say, yeah, stop, you know, it's not allowed, and, you know, make the person leave the mattress on the ground there, or whatever, you know, like even even in uh, Jeremiah, you know, he tells the city, why do you do that which is unlawful, and you carry your burdens outside the city walls on the Shabbat. Right, so we have we have uh, evidence that these early rabbinical decisions were upheld even by the prophets. Okay, all right. Titain lecha. What's titain? Is it give? Yes. Rutger. Yeah, it's very good. It's a pay noon verb, right? Pay noon, right? So titain. So you see the dagesh. That is where the noon assimilated in, right? In ancient Hebrew, this form would have been teen tain, 
But that noon assimilated in there, right? That's why it's spelled this way in biblical times already. Titan. Okay, good. So you will give or set, like designate, lecha. What's lecha? To you. Yep, to you or for yourself, either way. The whole sha'arecha. Okay, what's, what's a sha'ar? You guys know what a sha'ar is? Gate. Right, gate. Very good. Gate. And then notice, Naomi correctly read the whole, because we have a makef here, right? And here's our only accent. Right? So in ancient times, this would have been read the sha'arecha. The sha'arecha, right? Like very quickly. Right? So why is the comets an O sound here? What's happening? Why is it not bechal? Why is it bechol? How do we know it's a short comment? Anybody? I'm going to release you, Omar. Ma because of the makeb and construct. Okay. All right. That And that leads, what kind of syllable is this then here? What kind of syllable? Close. Yes. Calcus. Close. And accented. Short. Nice. Close. Good job. Close. Good job unaccented right so when we have a close meaning it ends in a consonant unaccented because the accent is over here now and you see the comments it's got to be short vowel right that takes a short vowel so in this case it's o sound the short comments okay so you guys remember for our o class vowels we have long short and half okay for the long it's colon right isn't it and it can be written like this or it can be written as what we call defective colon without the vav the short one is short comets comets katan o it's also an o sound right when it's short and then what's the half one who remembers what the half vowel is here or what it looks like. It's, it's called Khatov Kamets Khatov. <laughs> so yeah, it's a half comments, right? So it's also O. Oh. Also O. Oh. Okay. So that's what's happening there. Great. Asher. What's Asher? Anybody? Which? Hashem. That. Yup. Elohecha. Adonai. Yup. Adonai. Elohecha. What's Elohecha? Your God. No tame lecha. Your God. Giving to okay, you. maybe. What do, what does uh what is what what's the who gives what's the grammar form? What's the grammar form? Active participle. Active. Great. Participle. great, 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 great. I like how she just said giving. Notice she didn't put time in there. Participle. Okay. So I don't know your God. So we have to depend up here for the time, right? So probably we're gonna put this in perfect. I mean pardon me, imperfect in, in future or ongoing action. So Judges and officers, you will assign for yourself in all of your gates. Um, and then a share can sometimes be a bit weird, right? So he will probably say, like, where or in which uh, Adonai, your God, will give. I would probably say will give because we got the imperfect here. He's going to impart that here. Okay, but you were correct to, to not a, not put time on it yet. Will give, even though it's notain, right? Lecha to you. Lishvatecha. What's Lishvatecha? This what? To your Shabbat? Uh, Is it to your no, no. Look more careful. You know what? A sh to your Shabbat. To your Shevet, right? To your clan. You know what Shevet is? Shevet. Clan. No, Shevet. Shevet means a. We'll see if that idea of docs is going to work. Okay, so it's a like a staff, a rod, rod. And Yomar, metaphorically, what's it mean? What's the other meaning? Uh, Rabbi, it's a tribe. Yeah, tribe. Good, okay. Staff rod or tribe? Rabbi, is it in the sun? Shiftecha. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You're ready. That's yes. right. That's right. In Psalm 23, right? Nice. Yeah. Rabbi, huh. in case no one answer, Kerali. That's it. I need what say. <laughs> okay, I did it now. Good. Okay. Okay, so to your, and then like Yomar said, we have the plural indicator here, right? 
tribes. Because remember, when we put a suffix on a word, first we put the word into the construct state, right? And construct plural, it has this yod at the end. So that's how he knew it was tribes, right? So Adonai, your God will give to you, literally to your tribes, right? We might have to say like according to your tribes to make it sound good in English. Okay, so what does Shafetu mean? And they shall judge. Yeah, that's right. The Bob makes it makes it future, right? They will judge, right? Will judge. Okay. Et ha'am. And they and they. Yep. Et ha'am. Yes. Okay. Okay, I think I heard someone quietly your say, and your say the people. people. Good, the people. Well, careful, this is a different word. Mishpat Sedek. What's Mishpat? Judge. Okay, it's related to judge. Men. It. Okay, judge. you're right. You're right. Men. You're right. Righteous. Yes, judgment. that's right. So so she's right. Okay. So literally, judgment of Sedek, right? Judgment of righteousness. But she, she made it sound better. Righteous judgment is good. Yeah, you did it. Great. Okay.